everybody, it's Mrs. Pound, and I am back with the last section of chapter 1.3 on atomic structure. This chapter is a really short chapter. And so the last section, section 1.33, is on the periodic table of the elements. So our objectives for this section are to compare Mendeleev's arrangement of the periodic table to the modern periodic table, interpret information provided on the periodic table, and to relate the number of valence electrons to the properties of elements in a group. So the periodic table is an organized arrangement of elements in order of increasing atomic number with repeating physical and chemical property patterns. So the periodic table I gave you looks like this. And like I said, it's arranged in order of increasing atomic number. And it's laid out in this manner for a reason, because the elements in these different groupings share certain characteristics that we're going to take a look at. Now, there were attempts at other periodic tables before we came up with our modern periodic table. And the best one that got all of this started was Mendeleev's arrangement in his periodic table. But he, they did not know at that time about protons and that the protons were what determined the elements. And so he arranged his according to atomic mass because that is what they knew about. They knew that different elements had different atomic masses. But the problem with that is, can you guess? They didn't know about isotopes yet. They did not know that there were different isotopes for some of the elements, and so you couldn't use atomic mass, that there was something else you had to use. And now we know that that is the atomic number, the number of protons. So one of the arrangements on the periodic table are groups, and these are the vertical columns of elements in the periodic table. We sometimes call them families. And the special thing about groups is that in a group, all of the elements in that group have the same number of valence electrons, and it also is their group number. So let's take a look at that. So here, if we take a look at our periodic table, and you should have yours out too so that you can see it better as I'm pointing these things out because I realize that some things are kind of difficult to see here. So the groups are across the top here, and it tells you right here the groups. And the groups are 1A, 2A, then there's groups through here, um, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A. That is one way to arrange the groups. And if you use that, those group numbers, the group numbers are the number of valence electrons. Those are the outermost electrons that actually are reactive and are involved in chemical reactions. So that's a really important thing when we're talking about chemistry, the electrons that are actually involved in chemical reactions. You can also, underneath those are 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Um, 1 and 2 are the number of valence electrons. Then over here, if you just drop off the 1 in front of the number, that's the number of valence electrons if you use those group numbers, which um, tends to be a little more common right now uh, for numbering the groups. Now notice I didn't really say much about these guys. Um, we don't really talk about valence electrons too much with them. Mainly groups 1 and 2 and 13 through 18. Okay, so one thing I want to take a look at is also just looking here. Carbon belongs to group and I have 4A or 14. Now Remember the I's and B's and everything, those are Roman numerals, okay? So let's take a look on our periodic table. We find carbon, we go up here, and we see its group, 4A or 14, depending on which group numbers you are using. 
Okay, now the reason valence electrons are so important is because they determine the reactivity of an atom. Each atom seeks the most stable structure possible, which is a full shell consisting of eight electrons that we call an octet. O-C-T meaning eight, like octopus has eight legs, an octave has eight notes in it. Um, so octet meaning eight electrons. And the most stable, stable structure is that. If an atom has very few electrons or a shell that is almost complete, it will tend to be more reactive. So on our periodic table here, let's go back to the periodic table. Groups 1 and 2 here have very few electrons. They tend to be very highly reactive. Group 1 is pretty much explosive when it reacts. Over here, Group 17 is very highly reactive because it does not have quite a full shell. And so that is a very reactive group because it wants one more electron. So elements in groups 1, 2, and 7 are the most reactive. Atoms with a full valence shell are not reactive, and that is group 8A. So let's take a look at that group. So th this, this, and this group, those are the most reactive. This group here, we call them actually the noble gases. They have eight in their shell, so they are super happy with that. They are super stable. They are not very reactive at all. So as I said, they are the noble gases in group 8A or 18. They do not easily react with other elements because they have a full octet of eight valence electrons. They are super happy with that. Now, there are also uh, groups in the periodic table called periods. These are the horizontal rows of the elements in the periodic table, and they represent the energy levels. Um, when we were making our atoms, Remember, we had those different size rings of element, uh, electrons that went around. Those were different energy levels for the electrons. And so if we take a look here, period one goes across this way. So the period numbers are down. Period one is here, period two, period three, period four, and so on and so forth. And this also represents the energy levels that are available. So here, period one, one energy level. And so hydrogen has one electron in it in the first energy level. This here would be another ring farther out around the atoms and so on and so forth as you go down. Okay, now the periodic table is also arranged according to different types of elements, such as metals and nonmetals. So metals are an element that is usually hard, shiny, malleable, ductile, and a good conductor of heat and electricity. Now let's look at some of these words, like malleable. That means that it can be pounded into shape. So think of uh, like an, uh, a smith, okay? an iron worker. Think of them hammering the iron. That is malleable. Metals also tend to be ductile. They can be drawn into wires. So when you're thinking of wires, they're metal and that is a property of it. And so that's why we use them for conducting electricity is because they're good conductors of electricity. We also tend to use metal pans on top of our stoves because they are good conductors of heat. So Actually, the periodic table is mostly made of metals, and let me show you that on our periodic table. Okay, so on our periodic table, the dividing point are these kind of Kelly green elements. These are actually called the metalloids. We're not talking about them on our periodic table today, really. They're not in your definitions, but they actually can act like metals and non-metals. They have properties of both, so they are special here. They are on this ladder. See this nice black line? This is the ladder in the periodic table, and that separates the metals from the non-metals, and along that are the metalloids. So all of the metals are everything on this side of the ladder. So most of our elements 
are metals. These kind of uh, army green, the yellow, the pinks and reds and orange. And um, hydrogen, though, is a special case. It, that's why it's blue and it's up here. Um, it is actually a non-metal. It is a very special case. Okay. Um, uh, so those are our metals. Now, the, there are also non-metals. These are elements that are usually soft, not malleable, not ductile, and poor conductors of heat and electricity. Uh, some of them are gases, so obviously a gas, you can't pound into shape, you can't draw it into wire, okay? Um, some of them are also uh, solids, okay, or even liquids. The solids... Also, if you pound them or anything or try to draw them out, they'll just break, okay? So those are the nonmetals, and let's take a look at where they are on our periodic table. So on our periodic table, the nonmetals are hydrogen here, and everything to the right of the Kelly Green metalloids here. Uh, so right in here. These are all our nonmetals. Not very many elements, right? Okay, not very many elements. All, most of our elements are metals on the periodic table. So very few nonmetals. And the reason metalloids are green is because traditionally we kind of color in the metals yellow and we color in the nonmetals blue. And so yellow and blue make green for our metalloids that kind of act like both. And so our objectives today were to compare Mendeleev's arrangement of the periodic table to the modern periodic table, to interpret information provided on the periodic table, so I told you some things that we'd look at, and to relate the number of valence electrons to the properties of elements in a group. And so we took a look at the most reactive and the least reactive based on the number of valence electrons they have. So don't forget, if you're in my class, to be working on memorizing your symbols for your quiz coming up and don't forget your five questions for this section and that is it for this chapter so you can should start studying for the test